Hey, hey, party people. This is video number two I'm shooting with Bell's Palsy. Uh, thank you so much for all the well wishes, the thoughtful messages. I am feeling better. I am feeling a little bit more of the left side of my face. Things are progressing. Thank you so much for all your support. In this video, I'm going to render the same dress in five different fabrications. And I think there's a lot to be learned about the design sketch rendering process in demoing this for you. And at the end of the video, I got a couple of little bonus rendering things based off of uh, questions that I get a lot, okay? Now I designed this dress for teaching purposes. It has a fitted bodice and a dirndl skirt which means it's gathered at the waist and has fullness. And I, I basically designed this dress so that you can see me render both smooth and tight to the body parts and drapey parts. These are fairly quick marker sketches. And here is my basic process for a dress that has minimal texture, no shine, is not see-through at all. I like to use a semi see-through paper like marker paper ditto paper and draw on the wrong side and render on the right side so that i'm not smearing a bunch of pencil around with that first layer of base fabric color and then i like to go in and draw usually you know when you have drapey stuff it helps to kind of redraw the drapes so that you can place your shadows correctly, okay? So I'm gonna draw all the drapes, darts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I go in with my shadow color, in this case, the blue-green seven, and put in my shadows. You can see I already put my light source there. And basically we're going on the dark side, away from the light, under the light, like the bottom half of the breast and cast shadow like when big folds cast shadows onto fabric behind the folds and things like that and gathers on a dirndl are like you know fabric shadow fabric shadow fabric shadow so i put those shadows in there like that and often i like to go back in with my regular fabric marker which is the blue gray five and kind of soften the edges of the shadow a little bit not too much, you know, these are still really fast. This whole video took 33 minutes for me to shoot because I, I wanted to show the fast sketches. The next one is the same dress, but in denim. And I'm gonna use the same marker colors so that you can really see the differences in texture and highlights and all of that across the five dresses. Denim in general, is a little bit on the heavier side, is a little bit on the stiffer side when you come to the spectrum of fabrics. Of course, there are different weights of denim, but in general, I made the skirt a little bit flatter, like it fell a little bit because it's heavier. The folds are not as bouncy because it's a little bit stiffer and heavier. And I didn't create as many gathers at the waist than I did with like the linen, cotton, lightweight dress in the beginning. I rendered denim like I did the first basic rendering to start off with, base fabric color, draw out the shapes, put in my shadow. The big difference is going to be the texture. Okay, the way denim is woven, you see some of those white threads in a texture along the surface, a lot of the time you'll see it in a diagonal twill pattern. And so I'm gonna take a white colored pencil or a white charcoal pencil, and I'm gonna put those twill lines in there to kind of show off the white parts of the denim. And they're all gonna go in the same direction. Pay attention to your particular fabric for how that expresses itself in your swatch. And I'm gonna lay down the white only in the highlight areas okay that's kind of like you know you see it on the tops of your thighs when you're wearing jeans and not so much in the shadow area the next one will be the same dress in chiffon chiffon is super sheer 
It's super lightweight. And if you can see the initial underdrawing, you'll see how how flat it is, okay? It doesn't, it's not stiff, so it doesn't bounce out away from the body so much. You'll get that more with organza. And so the chiffon is closer to the body. Whenever you are rendering shears, you are going to need a couple of different skin tones. A lighter one for under the shear, or you can just render it really softly like I did in this, in this demo. And then a shadow flesh tone, okay? So I always start with the skin tone when I'm doing shears, okay? Got that down. And you can tell the difference of what's gonna be covered with the dress and what is just skin showing, right? Because of the strength of my marker stroke, how I filled it to the edges or I didn't, etc., etc. Now, the little underdress, I'm just doing like a solid, basic cotton underdress, you know, for modesty's sake. <laughs> Whenever I render a little underdress like this, I kind of like render it less, render it a little bit more subtle. The shadows are not as punched out. The details are not really clear because you're gonna layer a fabric over it. And so, yeah, like you just want less details showing through and the most detailed things are gonna be the outside pieces just like the skin tone. Like the skin tone is the strongest when it's just skin tone and not covered by chiffon, right? If you want to render a chiffon, you need to use a really light version of the color. So here I'm using blue gray one for the base of the chiffon and I'm using blue gray three for areas of shadow and areas where the chiffon is darker because it's doubled over doubled over because of the drape, doubled over because you can see the back of the skirt. Okay, you see that ellipse on the bottom where parts of it, you can see the back of the dress, things like that. If you have a dart folded over, you're gonna have multiple layers of the chiffon, so those will be darker. Anytime there's gathers, those kinds of areas I would punch in with the blue-gray three. This next dress is the same dress, but in charmeuse. A couple of things about charmeuse, one, it is drapey and liquid, and so it will fall, okay? See how it doesn't stick out as much as, say, the basic or the denim? And the drapes are small, maybe not as small as the chiffon, but pretty close, okay? It gets nice and ripply and small and not big and stiff and bouncy. And then charmeuse is shiny. And I'm going to show you two shiny dresses in this video. One is soft shine and what is hard shine. Those are just terms that I use to differentiate. Soft shine is things like charmeuse, satin, duchess satin, those kinds of things where you see the luster of the silk. You see it when it catches the light, but it's not blinding white shine. I mean, it might kind of look like that if you have a real cheap polyester satin. <laughs> But beautiful silk satin, silk charmeuses have a beautiful luster to them. Okay. So we're going to start by drawing the dress with the soft falling drapes of charmeuse. We put down the base color, again the blue gray five. We draw out the drapes and then we take our shadow color, put in the shadows. We take our basic fabric color to blend out some of the edges. And then now I'm taking a white charcoal pencil and I am coloring in the highlights. So remember our light source is high and to the right, the right of this paper. And so that's where my highlights are going to sit. The top plane of the chest, a bit of the flat of the stomach, the tops of those drapes as they hit the light. Okay. And then, just, you know, smudge it out a little bit with my pencil. No big deal. This one is General's Charcoal White. It's a brand I've used a lot. I like it and it's pretty inexpensive. This next one is hard shine. And by hard shine, I mean fabrics that are super duper shiny and it will produce like those bright white highlights. With this, I start with the shadows first. Okay, you're gonna put in the highlights and it's, we're so used to rendering shadows that a lot of the time it's easier to put down the shadows and then let that help you guide your placement 
of the highlights. So I put in my shadows first, you know, using the underdrawing. And then I'm taking my blue gray one and lightly putting in where the starkest highlights are going to be. If you have like a Copic gray double zero, like something super, super pale like that to mark where your brightest highlights are going to be. Because at the end of it, it's not going to read a color. It's going to be so contrasty. It's just going to look as close to white as possible. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can leave the white of the paper, which is something I often do. But if you're just getting started, taking that double zero gray or something like that to mark your highlights, and then take your fabric color, your base fabric color, and render around your highlights and over your shadows, then you get those three colors, the fabric color, the shadow color, and the highlights. I know, this is usually the most difficult in this video out of these five. Hard shine is generally the most difficult. So if it's more difficult for you, don't be sad about it. Just keep practicing, right? And I forgot to mention before, when I drew this dress, look how wide I made the skirt and how big I made the drapes because PVC is stiff. And so it's going to flare out a lot. And the drapes are not going to be like really gentle, delicate, narrow fluting, but big, wide drapes. And so I drew the drapes to reference the material being used. So you can really see the two different, because when you look at the pattern, they'll probably be very close to each other. Dernal skirt, fitted bodice. And as I mentioned before, I have deep dive, nitty gritty, super detailed rendering videos on all these textures, you know, in case you want more information, in case you want to deep dive more than, you know, a quick design sketch. So here you have the five dresses, all done in the same colors of markers, using the same basic dress style. Takeaways, fabric is so key to changing up the design. See how the different fabrics really change the mood of the entire dress. Takeaway number two, it's really uh, simple and straightforward to create textures and show that off in just even a quick sketch and really show off what the design is doing. Okay? Design communication is my style because I love to accurately express the design for people. Okay, these two bonus tidbits are just because I get these questions constantly. Zoe, how do you render black? Zoe, how do you render white? Okay, and honestly, it's really the colors of your markers or paints. I have a whole video on uh, black markers and their different colors, but essentially what you need to do is to find a soft light black, not dark gray, but a soft light black and a dark black. And you have your fabric color and your shadow color right there. And I generally like to punch out the details with a white color pencil or charcoal pencil if I want the look, the more obvious look. Otherwise, render like you normally would. With white, same concept, just find the right markers. You're gonna leave the base color white. You're gonna shadow with grays. There's a lot of grays out there, so find the right undertone that works with your fabric. I like to put in a couple of different layers of shadow when I do grays because I think it looks more complete that way, okay? So I'm using double zeros, zeros, ones, and threes. And you might be thinking, wow, grade three seems really dark. I want you, next time you're at the grocery store, pick up a bridal magazine and go look at some wedding dresses and you will find in those photos that some of those shadows are way darker than you might have imagined. As for white on white patterns, same thing. Find a gray zero, a gray one, and draw your patterns right on there. Ta-da! 
Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe, drop your comments and questions below. Please check the description box for all related videos, including the deep dive rendering videos. I have links galore in the description box of every single video I post to YouTube. So go check that out. And you know what I'm going to say next. Hashtag always be practicing. Hashtag practice not magic. Especially that hard shine one. That can be a bit of a doozy. Right? Good luck with all of your practice. And I will see you in the next video.